Hi, my name is Shumona, Shumona Chakravarti. I am located currently in Kolkata in India, and I work with DAG, formerly Delhi Art Gallery, which is one of the largest and leading art companies in India. Started about 30 years ago um, as a small gallery in Delhi and is now located in Delhi, Mumbai, New York, and our Kolkata office really looks at uh, the non-commercial side of DAG. So while DAG started off as an art company that collects um, you know, and sells art, uh, research around the artworks that we collect and adding new knowledge about the field of modern art in India, especially for many of the unknown artists, was a major part of DAG's work. So this idea of sort of building new knowledge uh, and making that knowledge more accessible uh, was always a part of its DNA from the start, even as a commercial gallery. But as the collection has grown, DAG has really now put concerted efforts into seeing how this collection could be made accessible um, and use that parts of that collection for public access and public engagement uh, through its museums program, which is what I head. So I'm the vice president of DAG's museums program. And uh, though we have a small team, we're based in Kolkata. And the main objective of this team is to take the collection that we have been given. We have a and and um, take that to as many people as possible through arts engagement, education, um, working with artists, researchers, as well as It's it's been um, you know figuring out what uh, open access can mean in the context of an art company uh, has been an interesting journey. I think everybody agrees broadly, you know, across the organization uh, that art should be made accessible. But what does access mean is something that we have worked towards trying to build a shared understanding of. I think right from the very beginning, you know, part of DAG's mission was to make art accessible across a wide demography. And uh, we've all, you know, different members of the team have added different perspectives on that. So I think we broke it down. We said that access, of course, means putting art out there through exhibitions, through publications. But is it enough to put it out there? Do we also then have to put it out there in a way that more people in different kinds of audiences have access to it? Okay, sure, you do that. But then what? Once a lot of different people have access to it, is it still accessible if people don't understand it or don't engage with it freely? So how do you put it out there becomes interest, becomes important. Also, once you figured out, you know, how to put it across in a way that appeals to a broad demographic that is in different languages, that is located across the country, um, is that still accessible, you know, to people? Is it really accessible if people then can't make that artwork their own um, or even have ways to respond to it creatively? you know have, have is it accessible if people themselves are not able to express themselves through art um so then it comes to not just putting art out there not just curating it in accessible ways but building people's capacities for creative expression for creative in interpretation for critical inquiry and finally is it accessible if you know like i said people can't make it their own um that we don't strengthen also the sector of artists researchers who can take this knowledge forward into different spaces like classrooms or communities uh, so I think that's that's been uh, um, an ongoing journey in trying to figure out what access means. And within this now, where does the idea of um, open glams and open access uh, feature? Uh, I think we were the, one of the first institutions in India to release a few artworks, just nine or 13 artworks, I think, as, you know, um, as artworks that could be downloaded under the Creative Commons. Um, and, you know, put it, we put it out there in collaboration with the Heritage Lab and with Medhavi, who's been very instrumental in, um, in helping organizations across India understand the idea of open clams and open access. So it was wonderful to be able to work with her as well as we moved uh, towards um, this journey. And uh, and so the main benefits, I think, you know, from putting art, uh, art out was visible to us then, you know, once we put these 13 artworks, we had to sort of see that was it valuable or not, you know, see that did it make a difference? It just putting things up on the internet and telling people they can download it, you know, does it really then make a difference? Does, is it used or is it forgotten? Does it become yet another archive that nobody accesses? But um, it was wonderful to see people's responses and how they downloaded the artworks, how they created their own GIFs out of it. So it was a part of a GIF it up competition. And so it was really wonderful to see how many responses we got. So it was initially like as a pilot, uh, definitely a very sort of 
positive and encouraging sign that if you do put it out there in a meaningful way, in a structured way, uh, in a way where you're, you know, not only putting it out there, but giving people some kind of prompt or some kind of framework within which they can use the artworks. Um, it will, you know, it will get a good response and people will be encouraged by it. So I think that made us think about open access and it made us think about open access in a way where we said that, okay, we put out artworks, but it needs to be put out within a certain framework. Uh, within and there should be a framework for through which people can use it and access it because just opening it up and putting it out there is definitely useful but can we do something more targeted can we do something more structured so once we were able to settle on that I think we we came to the final point about what the benefits are that yes if you are able to put it out there in a structured way in a way where you know you not only put it out there but make it easy for people to use it give them the tools or the structures or the frameworks of how they can use it um there will be a benefit and we decided to specifically do this uh, through our program with teachers so what we then did from our learnings of jiff it up is to create our teachers workshop which we actually launched just the middle of last year it took us a while to really hone down how we want to put artworks out there and for what purpose and for whom so just so that we could start in a targeted way um so we focused on in on teachers we focused in on how teachers could bring art into their classrooms. Um, and we started doing workshops with teachers um, around certain collections, thinking about how they could bring art into their classrooms. So I think that's how we specifically want to open it up. And I think the benefits of that kind of access will be immense uh, in get, creating more participatory classrooms, creating more inclusive classrooms for different learners, uh, creating classrooms where people actually are, you know, uh, encouraged to creatively respond to what they're being taught instead of memorizing information, creating classrooms where art is being used uh, to introduce subjects that are already taught, but get people to cr critique it, to analyze it through art. So I think we can really make a big difference if we can really make uh, make um, these artworks accessible to teachers across the country and they can start introducing art in their classrooms uh, through this open through this collection so i think we've we've we've, we've realized that it's really beneficial to us to our goals as a museum initiative and to people we work with if they are able to use it in a constructive and sort of structured way so yeah so I spoke a little bit, you know, through our teachers program, I'm thinking about how it benefits us as an organization and our goals. But how does having a resource like the Wikimedia Commons benefit us as organizations? I think that once we, you know, that uh, helps us because we're able to create conversations between our collection and other collections, which we otherwise wouldn't be able to do if we only had access to our work. So we had to go through laborious processes of seeking permissions from every different archive, every different uh, collection. So it's helped us a lot in, again, in our education program specifically, because when we are curating um, uh, resources for teachers to use in their classrooms, and we're opening up our collection for teachers to use in their classroom, our collection in isolation doesn't complete the conversation or it's the, you know, the, the learning is not enriched by that. It's our programs are always enriched when we can bring our collection in conversation with other uh, collections, especially ones that have, you know, take, gone all the way and opened up their entire collection for public use. So definitely for larger organizations, for established organizations who've been doing this for a long time, other organizations like us who are on this journey um, and are trying to figure out what it means in our context, um, it's hugely beneficial to us from our own programs and our own impact. So when we started thinking about this idea of open glam and what that could mean for an art company, a commercial art company, which has its own non-commercial interests as well and its own idea of creating a larger impact, um, many questions come up like the misuse of artworks. Um, these artworks are also commercial uh, artworks. So what happens when you put it out there and then somebody buys an artwork and it belongs to them? So what happens? How is ownership passed on? Um, how do we have accountability in the process? How do we um, not devalue the artworks, you know, uh, through misuse? Um, I think these are all valid questions, you know. I think, you know, not just art companies, but museums, uh, archives, uh, you know, this, these questions are something that I think is, uh, you know, are unresolved for many people. Um, so, um, so, so these are definitely challenges that people face. One way of thinking about it is, okay, we put the artworks in on the internet for people to see, like the government of India has done. Uh, many of the museums have their artworks available for people to see, but do we really need to let people download it and do what they want with it? If people want to learn from these artworks, if people want to use these for non-commercial purposes, 
then it's there for everyone to look at, to explore, to learn about with captions, with details, um, you know, what is the value of having people download it uh, for their use. So I think, you know, is there that much more value? What what are the pros and cons? Like we have to weigh the, 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 the pros of it uh, versus the cons. I mean, does it really evenly balance out? So I think these are some of the challenges that when we speak about open glam, do we have to go, you know, is, is, is there a happy medium or a happy compromise that we can reach in terms of un unlearn, in terms of understanding access in our own way on our own terms, or, you know, um, is it is it really about, uh, you know, a, 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 you know, and, and there are, of course, the gradations within the, the CC uh, copyrights, uh, the CC copy less rather, but, uh, but uh, still within even these variations, I feel uh, become challenging in terms of how much scope they give for organizations to define what access means to them, so. so uh, one of the ways in which I had come across, um, you know, the idea of Creative Commons or Open Glams was in the, in it was to, you know, open up resources, put them up online and download them. But I met someone, her name is uh, Georgia, and she works in an organization called Pro Comum in Brazil. Uh, and their whole philosophy is about the commons. They have run a community center, um, a community garden, a community kitchen. But the entire way in which they work in a kind of economically marginalized neighborhood in Sao Paulo is about um, is about bringing people on board and redistributing resources, redistributing knowledge, uh, redistributing access. Um, so I think that uh, you know, keeping that philosophy of um, the commons, uh, not just in terms of the resource archives you have, but across your programs in terms of making them participatory, making them inclusive, uh, redistributing knowledge uh, is something, you know, and thinking of access more broadly as GLAMs um, is something that I was encouraged to do through the work of an organization like Procomum. So I think translating that philosophy across uh, our work is something which, you know, I realize the value and potential of. For those who are hesitating to open up collections, I think my personal message would be to uh, find your own formula for doing it. You know, it's worth doing it uh, because you will see benefits. But then, like I said, do you find your own structure, your own framework within which you want to do that? Uh, is there a particular community that you want to open it up to, for example, with us for teachers and schools? Um, is, there a, is there a particular way in which you want to op open up? So open it up through a competition, a design challenge, um, and then through these test cases, you will start seeing its advantages. Um, for us, like for the 150 works that have been identified as with, by DAG for its museum collection, we are putting it up on our website for people to download by just writing to us and then they can they can download it after they tell us that they're using it for a non-commercial educational purpose. So we're not putting it up on Wikimedia or we're not you know, changing the license for it because again, like I said, there are challenges to figuring out the IP of those works. But um, but we are finding our own way to do it. So I think there is a way, and uh, you know, and it, it will reap benefits, and you'll see the benefits also if you do it in a way that's structured and suits your own requirements as well as organizations. <laughs>